Hello, people. Uh, welcome to the Jails Talk. My name is Michael Lucas. Uh, I've been using Unix since the late 80s. Uh, and I've written a bunch of books, including a new book on jails. And this talk focuses on the base system and what makes jails work. If you are managing many jails, I strongly recommend using IOCage. But when something goes wrong, you have to understand what's really happening under the hood. So, how many of you were practicing sysadmins before virtualization? I love BSD CAN. Two thirds of the hands in the room went up. So, uh, once upon a time, operating systems installs were important. They were precious. You, the company had one, maybe two computers, and <coughs> they had to be installed correctly because you had to live with those decisions for five, maybe ten years. Because, see, see originally computers could last a, a long time. They, they were not disposable <coughs> like they are today. And backups were hard, deciding how to partition was hard, and virtualization changed all of that. So, uh, and jails are one of the earliest virtualization technologies. Jails are often called something like CH root on steroids, and it, that's not wrong, but it's not really correct. A jail is a collection of namespace transformations. File systems is one of those namespaces. The, the Unix uh, file system is a namespace that starts at root and goes down through various directories. Uh, and a jail locks you into a subset of that and gives you a new root directory on the host's uh, inside as a subset of the host's name, file system namespace. Process IDs, similarly, uh, a jail creates a subset of the host's process IDs and says, this is all you can see, this is your namespace. IP addresses, again, the network is a namespace. A jail can only see certain IP addresses as assigned by the host administrator. And usernames, the namespace for a jail for usernames is totally different than the host. Root in the jail is not the same as root on the host. Uh, and one important thing for jails is all of these transformed namespaces are wholly subordinate to the host. You can think of a, uh, a jail and the namespace transformations as a literal jail cell with a one-way mirror. The host can peek into the jail, it can reach into the jail, it can do anything it wants to the jail, and the jail, what's in the jail is imprisoned and has no defense against the host. And whenever jails come up, and different types of virtualization are discussed, often in the bar or over drinks. You'll get this argument of lightweight virtualization versus full virtualization, which is more secure. Uh, jails can't possibly be secure, or full virtualization is more or less secure. And th this argument gets really fervent. But the answer to it is actually very, very simple. Um, how many operating systems does a computer run? Anyone care to guess? 42. Well, yes. We, we, uh, again, I love BSD Ken. We have Brooks holding up all his fingers. and. Uh, <laughs> But for the benefit of people watching at home, RAID controllers, they run an operating system. That little menu you bring up is an OS. Uh, 
hard drives. Talk to uh, Rod Grimes sometime, and he will tell you all about how he can hook a couple alligator clips up to the outside of the hard drive and run some power in, and boom, he's got a menu. Uh, CPU cache attacks. We just had a fresh crop of them harvested from Intel this week. But we knew about these back in 2005. I, and, you know, Colin, of course, did not name his attack. He was too busy breaking the internet. Uh, motherboards. Asus just had uh, a live update go wrong. Because, uh, essentially, uh, Unix is built on a stack of turtles, and it's turtles all the way down. <laughs> so, would I use jails in a secure environment? Well, tell me what secure means, and I'll tell you if I'd use them. Uh, I have been in data centers where, sure, jails are fine, but there will be no flammable materials in this data center. Uh, I've been in environments where there is no direct TCP IP connection to the outside world. Everything must be proxied. That's what they called security. Sorry, I, I seem to be bumping the mic. Uh, would, I, you, would I put the web interface to launch nuclear missiles in a jail? Well, no, but I also wouldn't use a web interface to not launch nuclear missiles. So, what problem are you solving? Nail that down, nail down your constraints, and you can decide if jails are the right solution for you. Uh, I often find I use jails not for security, but to constrain software to a specific environment. And this sounds very simple. We, we transform some namespaces and, and go. But the actual practice is very complex. Jails build on everything about system administration. Uh, my jails book just came out and people are complaining that this is an advanced book. Well, you know, I wrote seven books learning enough to write this book. Yes, it's an advanced book. Uh, if you want to build virtual networks, you should know what a virtual network is before just saying, I'm going to do it with jails. So, and, and jails have been around a long time. Uh, Paul Henning Camp did a search back in the primordial Unix code, and he found the earliest jail-like code that was added to BSD between 18 July 1975 and 7 May of 1979. And jails have evolved continuously. Uh, while the modern ones appeared in 1998, uh, th that's over 20 years now. And things that were unthinkable with the hardware we had that are now easy today. I remember being very happy to have 64 meg of RAM in my server. I was thrilled. That, that was a big deal. And if you go looking for information on jails, the web is full of old information. Would you want to see someone using your how-to that you wrote today in the year 2035? Probably not. Things are going to change between now and then. Well, you're doing the same thing when you go looking for documentation and find something written in 2005. Because that's as far away as 2035 is. And, and people did horrible, appalling things to make jails work in the early 2000s that you shouldn't do today. Uh, so let, let's start with actually setting up a jail host for today. The, the operating system install on the bare metal is important, again. 
the storage, separate where your jails are going to go and where your operating system is. I would tell you to mirror your OS drives and then set up a bunch of storage for jails. Uh, memory, how much do you have? Get more. CPU, again, this is going to depend on your workload, but you will find yourself sticking more and more inside jails. And while jails use much fewer resources than full virtualization, uh, no computer is big enough anymore. IP addresses, I would recommend you get an IP address for each jail you want to run, although there's ways to work around that. The tricky part is configuring your network services. Any services, any IP addresses and ports bound by the host cannot be used by jails. For example, if you use a default SSHD configuration, SSHD binds to all IPs on the host, which leads you to configurations like, well, the host listens on port 22, but all the jails listen on port 23, and your users will hate you even more. Don't do that. How many of you have configured jails with the base system? What year? Uh, vaguely, within the last five, six years. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, though. Uh, jails are configured by parameters in jail.conf. Many of these are Booleans, some are variables, some of them change how the jail behaves merely by being present. Kind of like when Darth Vader walks into the room, everything changes. And you set all of these in jail.conf. So here is a very simple jail. We define a host name, sorry, we define a jail name then a host name, the IP on the, to give it, a path to the root directory. We tell the host to mount a device file system, clean the environment, and then define startup and shutdown commands for the jail. It seems pretty simple but tedious, so jail.conf lets you define default settings. Here we say, Every jail, you mount a device file system. Every jail, you clean the environment, and you set all of these for every jail. And then inside the jail definition, all you need is the jail name, host name, IP, and path. And here, we have one default setting that we've overridden. How many of you have written system startup scripts? Um, not not just to start a service, but to start the entire system. A fair number of hands. It's, it is a learning experience. I would, if you, for most people, I would tell you, don't do it, just use the default system startup. Uh, jails tend to make people think that they can write their own startup, and it's, it is possible, but prepare, be prepared for a learning curve. Another nice feature are, is variables in jail.com. For example, here, I define cache j to be slash jail, and path, which says the root directory for the jail, I define as cache j cache name. So when I go to the jail, each parameter becomes a variable. Log host is the jail's name, so the the jail's path is slash jail slash log host. And my jail configuration is literally empty. Everything else is just inherited from the defaults. I'm also using this IP host name, which tells the host to assign the jail's IP from DNS. Uh, this is both very useful, and again, DNS ruins everything. So. Choose your pain. Now, 
once you have a configuration, you need some files inside, the, inside your, your jail's new root directory. And the key these days is essentially ELF. You cannot run an A out user land without a custom kernel. Uh, how many of you still have FreeBSD 2.2 systems you want to run? Good. <laughs> um, and, and yes, yes, uh, 4.0 used TGZ files, not uh, TXZ. And if you know that, you're welcome to leave right now. So, an important thing is that jails must be, the jail user land must be the same revision as the host or lower. You cannot run a FreeBSD 13 jail on a FreeBSD 12 system. And to start the jail, service jail start jail name. And then here we run the JXEC log host to execute a shell inside the jail. Now, service, IO cage, all of these commands are convenient front ends to the jail command. Why would you not just run the jail command? Well, I have better things to do than type this. And you do too. Here I'm, I'm using the jail command minus V for, for verbose. The C means create. And here is the, the name I've taken from jail.conf. And it spits out everything it really does to create the jail. So if you're having trouble with a jail, if it doesn't configure the way you think it should, you can look and see what it's really doing and what are all the parameters it's setting. And this will tell you where you made your mistake in jail.conf. Um, jails start very quickly. You start, the process is running inside the jail and it moves on. There's no probing of device drivers. There's no, uh, None of the things that make a FreeBSD startup take a long time take place inside a jail. But the startup order still matters at times. I've been in more than one environment where the boss insisted that we would never have a website that displayed a database error, which really meant he wants the database started first and shut down last. And jails let you set dependencies so that requirements like that can be satisfied. To see the jails running on your system, run JLS, you'll get the IP, the host name, not the jail name, the host name, and the path. And that's fine and simple, but really, if I'm looking at jails, I want to see what's going on in the jail. And here, I'm using JLS again, and I'm showing all the parameters used, defaults, what's set by default by jail, and everything that is currently running, or, or all runtime parameters for this jail, which will tell me essentially what's turned on and what's turned off. Another common case is when you want to see what is the value of a parameter for all your jails. What, I, what I'm showing here are the System 5 IPC parameters. <coughs> Any of you use System 5 IPC on your hosts? And we, we have a couple hands. If you're using something like a database like Postgres, uh, a, a real database, then you're probably using that. And here I'm querying to see what 
the value of these parameters are on the host, on each jail. <laughs> so, looking at a jail, the, the capital J flag indicates a process is jailed in, in the PS output. You can also pick a particular jail and say, show me what's running in this. And programs like pgrep, pkill, and top, they all accept this minus j, letting you poke at individual jails. Now, a, a process running inside a jail is executing inside the jail's namespace. You can start new processes inside that. You're not tied to stuff that's spawned by the jail startup process. So here with JXEC, I'm emulating a root login on the console. Uh, the minus L flag purges the environment. Without that, your jailed session in inherits your uh, login environment. So things like your SSH environment variables get carried into the jail. And that is probably not what you want. You can also run commands as you create and destroy the jail. Here I'm, uh, I have this exec pre-start, which means run this command before on the host before you start the jail. Uh, exec post start means once you start the jail, run this command, and then the same for stop. I've also set this exec.console log, which logs the jails, the output of the jail startup script, kind of like var run the message boot. So, you've got jails. You've got hundreds of jails on one host. You, you have jails piled high and deep, and you want software on all of them. Now, package can be used inside the jail. Package can be used on the host to manage packages inside the jail. It, it is possible for two different versions of package on two different releases to be very slightly different. Uh, if you somehow managed to bootstrap uh, a FreeBSD 8 system and, and get a modern package on that, um, the, the odds that it would be the same as a, as a current package, I, I, I wouldn't want to risk it. Pick one way to manage your packages. I prefer to manage from the host because then I can just script everything and manage everything centrally. And, and I use a lot of loops. So, and package minus J and jail name lets you manage those packages seamlessly from the host. <laughs> And the package database resides in the jail. <coughs> now, now we're getting into to some fun things. We're systems administrators. We like things to be clean and, and elegant. We, we want to not waste disk space. Uh, I bet a bunch of you remember when a one gigabyte hard drive was huge. A thousand bucks. Uh, and a thousand dollars, yes. This was serious disk space. And a free BSD install nowadays takes, what, 400 megabyte? Some, let's call it half a gig because I like easy math. If you have a hundred jails on your host, you would be wasting 50 gigabytes of disk space on multiple copies of the same thing. And surely we can optimize around this somehow. Um, and, and a lot of ways have been figured out to, to cope with this. But 
a, a lot of them grow increasingly complicated. So if you're looking at optimizing for disk space, I, I, I would tell you that file system optimization is directly proportional to downtime because you'll mess it up somehow. And you'll have to figure out what happened and is that few hundred megabytes of space that you are saving by being clever worth the outage? Maybe it is. Uh, but these days you can buy 10 terabyte hard drives. So I would tell you, don't, don't worry about it. But we're going to talk about it anyway because people love to do it. So. Uh, Cloning is very easy with ZFS. You snapshot, you clone you, the, the data set, you remove the SSH host keys and change the root password and all of those things. Uh, and a template is basically just a, a clone with a bunch of stuff pre-installed that you just keep cloning over and over. Uh, or if you're on UFS, it's just a, temp, a tarball of a pristine host that you extract when you need it. Uh, this is slightly different in IOCage. But then, base jails. Now, base jails sound lovely. You take one user land, and you null mount the vital system directories inside each jail so that when you upgrade the base jail, all of your jails are automatically upgraded. And th this seems kind of cool. And, and you can set a parameter to say, when you create this jail, here is the special FS tab for this jail. You can even set that mount FS tab as a default so that all of your jails look foreign. And you wind up with each jail has an FS tab like this. Uh, this is for an LDAP server. I, I have my base jail here. And say the, the slash bin in the base jail gets mounted inside the derived jail. Uh, and that looks really nice and simple for a plain install, but then really very few jails need just the base system. We want packages. And packages go under user local. And you need a separate user local for every combination of packages. Uh, for example, I have uh, jails for FreeBSD 12 with PHP 7.2 and another for PHP 5.6. And I have to mount the correct user local on the correct jail. And I really hope someday to have time to stop using PHP 5.6. And, and hopefully that glorious day will come after BSD can. So, but if you install a new package there, it's available on all hosts using that user local. I have run web servers where you must have this installed, but you must not have this other package. Uh, usually it's PHP, but there, is many, there are many other software ecosystems that have similar issues. So you may wind up with a bunch of different user locals, and I would ask you to consider, is that really an optimization for you? So jail features have changed under the, over the last 20 years. And, and it boils down to that stuff that was unthinkable with your 64 meg of RAM machine are now trivial when you have 64 gigabytes. Um, I'm going to use System 5 IPC again as an example because it's famously mentioned in mailing lists and forums. And depending on 
What post you find and when it was written, your answer wildly differs. Originally, all the jails shared the same System 5 IPC memory space. So you could run databases in separate jails and they could see each other's IPC. Uh, or they relied on IPC internal controls to prevent them from seeing each other, not the jail. And then jails got a little more advanced and we said, okay, we're going to add a, a, a syscatel that says, do we allow System 5 IPC or not? Yes or no? And now we can configure unique settings per jail. We can share with hosts. It's all tunable on a per jail basis. So you need to look at the documentation you're reading and check the date to find out, is this still accurate? You know, look for something that is more recent, answering the same question. File systems and jails are, are kind of nifty because you can delegate some file systems to a jail. Uh, you can tell jails that they can mount and unmount their own device file systems, that they can, uh, you can delegate a ZFS data set to a jail or an entire Z pool. I have done this for large phone record systems. And you use LSVFS to say what can and cannot be managed from within the jail. And, and some of the older traditional file systems are too tightly tied to virtual memory to be managed. Okay. Jails can have multiple IP addresses, but one IP can be bound to one and only one jail. The, the exception is, is if you have multiple jails sharing a single IP. And this works great until colon colon one or, or 127.001 if you're in the, the increasingly small IPv4 world. Uh, since one jail, since one IP can be bound to one and only one jail, and the loopback address is needed everywhere, uh, the kernel lies to the jail. The, a jail's loopback is actually the IP that's assigned. So if don't configure things in a jail to attach to the loopback and think that they are private because they are not. That is listening to the network. Uh, and there are ways around that. You could add more loopback IPs to the loopback interface. But these days, the simple thing to do is use VNet. Uh, Virtual network stacks where each host, where each jail gets to control its own little piece of networking and then each gets its own 127.001. Uh, the advantage here is these jails can do networking and have their own firewall. Here are some things you can do with jails. Uh, hierarchical jails can run jails of their own. So you can hand a, a team, a, a, a allocation of 10 jails inside another jail and say, here, configure these yourself. Stop bothering me. You can jail old servers. I jailed a FreeBSD4 billing system running MySQL 1.5 and, and like PHP 2 on a FreeBSD 10 host, which did not resolve the fact that we were running MySQL 1.5, but it got us off of this ancient hardware and let me use a modern FreeBSD to, to packet filter it off. Uh, you can install Linux in a jail, and people do this. People write device drivers in jailed Linuxes. Uh, I am told you can even run systemd Linux in a jail. I've not tried that because my life is still worth living. 
Uh, you can establish resource limits on jails. This is fairly new as a default. Uh, say what jails may use which CPUs, how much disk I O. You can also do fun things. Uh, the first time I tried RCTL, I said, well, let's see if this really works. I'm going to say if, if process one runs for more than 30 seconds, terminate it. It worked. How's the overhead on that? Um, I have heard people say the overhead is fine on that. I have heard people complain about the overhead on that. I would tell you it's a new default in FreeBSD 12, and try it. See what happens. File bug reports. FreeBSD has run with, uh, with that uh, by default for at least two to three years, no issue. OK. Incomplete jails. You can choose which namespaces you are going to alter. If you're running a virtual host and you have one IP from your provider or, and you want to jail your web server and your <coughs> mail server separately, you can do that and half the jails just inherit the host's IP stack. You can run a tiny user land, which will become much easier when package source is a thing which we have grand hopes for as of this BSD can. You can also jail something on the host using the host's file system. And this might seem counterintuitive to how we normally think of jails, but the question is, what problem are you trying to solve? I've run many applications where, uh, for me, they're usually Java server applications where suddenly the process goes nuts, uh, it spews gobs of, of child processes and starts eating CPU and everything is horrible. And I can't even log in to kill this thing and, and know there are these stray zombie processes and everything sucks. Put that in a jail and just kill the whole jail. And that way it's a contained unit, you can say, this application can use all but one CPU. That leaves you enough processor to log into the machine and kill it. Um, uh, I'm going to talk very briefly on IO Cage. IO Cage lets you do all of this on the command line, and you can run commands to create complete channels. That's kind of cool. But the reason I picked IO Cage is they have plugins. I can run a command and say, give me Plex. Give me an elastic search. Uh, I want a pony. And boom, there it is. So that is the end of the talk. We have just a couple minutes. Uh, I have a, a print proof of the jails book. It's the very first copy that ever existed, and I will give it for free to the person who can tell me, who, to the person who has the worst virtualization system. Run it today. <laughs> oh, Dan, yes. Papers.bscan.org runs an outdated version of Pentabar with old versions of Ruby and old versions of Postgres. Mm, I'm not going to repeat that for the audience because uh, because we're being filmed <laughs> and nobody needs to know that. But yes, that particular VM is terrible. Can anyone anyone have a yes? I still have a production system on running on Linux free server, which is, has been deprecated for years on an old version of Debian uh, that has that's still running also. On Okay, we have a 10-year-old host, obsolete Linux, everything is terrible, nothing is secure. Can anyone beat Okay, see me after for your book. <laughs> okay. What? Questions?
questions and answers. Before I take them, very quick. Dear IRS, I'm now tax deductible here, thank you. <laughs> um, questions and answers, anyone? We have like five minutes before lunch. David. On the incomplete jail slide, you said something about hopes for package source, but I didn't know the context of your comment. Ah. Um, hopes for package source. Package Previous, source. sorry, package base, not package source. My apologies. Package source is NetBSD, and I use that all the time because I keep getting stuck with Solaris 7 boxes. Uh, any other questions? Yes. How are my C coding skills? My code makes the baby Jesus cry. Any other question? Okay. Oh. Would you also like to maintain a firewall? <laughs> I will be happy to maintain IPF. I would even learn how to run SVN remove just to maintain IPF. <laughs> can, we get, can we get this guy a commit bit? <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Go get lunch. Thank you for coming.